Hello, everyone. Welcome to Backyard Musings, broadcasting live from Apple Valley, California. I'm Steve. I'm Scott. Today, we're going to try and make herring sound as fascinating as possible for you. You can see on our slide here, it's got some herrings. The bottom one is the... The, the big herring. The big herring, the Baltic herring. That's they a big found. herring. That is a big herring. That is... 36, 37 centimeters? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's put some food in your gut right there. Okay, a new study reveals a genetically distinct type of Baltic herring that thrives on a fish diet. Fish do not, eat their own. Not on plankton. These guys have evolved, unlike its Atlantic counterpart. This adaptation, adaptation was likely occurred, has likely occurred due to the unique conditions of the Baltic Sea and the absence of larger predatory fish, presenting a special opportunity for the local eco ecosystem and fisheries. I have a no nephew that served as mission in the Baltics. Oh yeah, no competition. So these these in order to eliminate competition, these herrings just started eating each other, you know. Atlantic and Baltic herring, known for their plankton-based diet, play a vital role in the ecosystems of the northern Atlantic Ocean and the Baltic Sea. Good news for whales too. Whales eat plankton. Right? Oh, and I'll bet you they'll eat some of these herring. Oh, these fish serve as a crucial connection between plankton and higher-level predators, including larger fish, seabirds, and marine mammals and humans. Would you like to know more? A new study published today um, in Nature Communications by researchers at the Uppsala University in Sweden has revealed a surprising discovery. The evolution of genetically distinct fish-eating herring in the Baltic Sea. Oh, man. Yep. Um, this unique population has emerged in the relatively young Baltic Sea which has existed for only about 8,000 years since the end of the last gla gla glaciation. Uh, <laughs> earlier by... It's early, a fish-eat-fish world, man. Yeah. Earlier research by the same group identified that herring populations are divided into various ecotypes, each genetically adapted to specific environmental fac factors such as climate, salinity, and preferred spawning seasons. Who would have known? Who would have known this? Know. And who would have thought to even study this stuff? Uh, or this, present it to you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, this new finding adds an unexpected twist to the ecological and evolutionary story of Baltic herring. There is a backstory to this, and, and we are going to check this out. I'm, I'm, like, excited to check this out. Linnaeus, the founder of taxonomy and professor in Uppsala in the 18th century, defined the Baltic herring as a subspecies of the Atlantic herring adapted to the brackish water in the Baltic Sea. What a scientific statement right there. What a scientific statement. The Baltic herring is much, brackish. <laughs> is much smaller and has less fat than the Atlantic herring. The current project was initiated when the principal investigator was informed by a local fisherman at the coast northeast of Uppsala, that there is a special type of herring that always spawns just before midsummer, which is as big as the Atlantic herring. This much, hmm. lo this much, lo thus much larger than the common plankton eating Baltic herring. Hmm. Hmm. Quote When I learned that the locals are aware of a specific population of very large Baltic herring that always spawns in the same area year after year, I decided to sample and explore their genetic. Constitution. Oh, so sounds does that mean he ate it? I'm, I'm going to say so, yeah. Huh. And it sounds kind of like a salmon, right? Kind of. Some, Spawn. Same characteristics. Yeah. So now we know that this is a genetically unique population that must have evolved over hundreds, if not thousands, of years in the Baltic Sea, says Leif Anderson, professor at the Department of Medical Biochemistry and Microbiology Bi Biology at Uppsala University, who led the study. The, the researchers carried out a careful analysis of morphology, growth pattern, fat content, and presence of environmental pollutants. A striking finding was that the large herring exhibited damaged gill rakers. Mm. The plankton-eating Baltic herring uses the gill rakers to sieve plankton. So the plankton, will cut, the water will go through and it keeps plankton, the plankton. Yeah, yeah. Like a net almost. Yeah. While the observed gill damage in large herring likely reflects a switch to a fish diet, probably including the common stickleback, which has sharp spines for predation protection. Mm. Mm. I have a fish here in the Mojave River. It's called, well, I'm, I'm 
It's underground? Butch this. No, it's in the river. Mojave Chub, I think it's called. And it's got stickle, stickles on its back, oh. I believe. Oh. Again, don't quote me, but hmm. I'm going back to my early early days of living here in the desert. So hmm. anyway, another uh, another interesting finding was that the large herring had a significantly higher fat content and significantly reduced level of dioxin, a problematic chloro organic pollutant in the Baltic Sea. Hmm. Both these observations and the much faster growth rate are consistent with a switch to a fish diet. Hmm. So well, they haven't seen them eating, in action. They're eating their own, right? right? And this would probably also affect the people that are <coughs> eating the herring. Yes, because it's a. I mean, it's that's a food source, right? Yep, big, yep, big time. Definitely. Um, yep. Relatively low dioxin content makes this fish eating Baltic herring interesting for human consumption. Very interesting. Yeah, that's at, what we're talking about. After it. after finding that the large fish eating herring is genetically unique. The researchers decided to perform whole genome sequencing of the large herring together with previously collected large herring from dif different parts of the Baltic Sea. That's the natural step. Now do genomes, right? We're going to do that next, right? Sure. The stomach content of the second set of large herring showed that these individuals are feeding on small fish. Quote, our genetic analysis demonstrates that there are at least two distinct subpopulations of fish eating herring in the Baltic Sea. Oh, my gosh. One occurs north of Stockholm, and the other occurs south of Stockholm. So there's Stockholm is like a cutoff. Something about Stockholm is dividing the, these fish, says Jake Goodall, researcher at Uppsala University, first author publication. I added that little thing that Stockholm the, is the, 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 uh, the dividing cutoff. point. Like a yeah, I mean they say it, but it's like what's happening in Stockholm? Is it the weed that they sell? Is that do they do that in Stockholm? Oh yeah. Oh, do they? Oh, oh okay. yeah. Never been. Oh, yeah. Uh, one interesting question is why fish eating herring have evolved in the Baltic Sea when there is no evidence for such herring in the Atlantic Ocean. Hmm. The, the Baltic Sea is a very young water body uh, that we talked about earlier and only existed for about 8,000 years. After the end of the last glaciation period, only a limited number of marine fish have been able to colonize in uh, the brackish water in the Baltic Sea, which where salinity is in the range of two to 10 percent compared with about 35 percent in the Atlantic Ocean. That's, that's salty out there in the in the Baltic or in the Atlantic. In the Atlantic, yeah. More, yeah, yeah two to 10 versus 35. So, yeah, so why, huh? That's quite a uh, quite a change, right? Yeah, maybe there's a hypotherm or whatever that's stopping it, you know, like megalodon. Megalodon is way down deep, it doesn't come up because of that. Whatever. I'll take your word for it on that. Yep. We hypothesize that fish eating Baltic herring have evolved due to a lack of competition from other predatory fish. For instance, mackerel and tuna. Oh, tuna's good. It is and good. It, and yeah. it makes so, some money from it. Yeah. Uh, which do not occur where we find fish eating herring. Thus, these herring take advantage of an underutilized food source in the Baltic Sea, says Leif Anderson. Fascinating herrings, yeah, yeah, small fish, mighty story. We exactly we were talking before the segment, we were talking about the harpy eagle, which is one of the largest eagles, claws like a grizzly. Um, can take down it's just nasty. We might do a it's the biggest eagle, we might do a segment on that. Bigger than the bald eagle, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, wow, wingspan is uh, like seven feet. So it's almost like a uh, condor. Almost, but it's wow. more ferocious. It's a predator. It's not a carrion eater. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, if you see one of these, just lay down and just start whimpering because it's going to eat you. <laughs> okay. You know we don't have any of those here, right? No. Okay. No. I mean, the the harpies are down South America in the jungle. Yeah. I mean, we've got some eagle living around here, like around up around Civil yeah. Lake and stuff. So, yeah. but, I saw a bald eagle in Alaska. They're up there. Yeah. Saw them in Kansas. Oh wow! Yeah, in a zoo or a no, wild? On the wild, Fort uh, Fort. Uh, help me out here, people. What's the What's the Army Fort at uh, House of the Gold? Little Apple. Nah, I want to say Fort Ord, but that's California. Fort uh, Fort Ord, sure. Uh, Fort Knox. No, that's Kentucky. Oh, that's Kentucky. Yeah. 
Kansas, Fort something Kansas, the big red one, first infantry. Never mind. Anyways, I saw it out there. Your army Mom buddies are not going to be happy about the fact I know, that you can't I know. remember that. I st- I'll, once we log off, I'll remember it. You watch. It'll come to you. <laughs> All right. See you later, folks. Take care, everyone. Thank you.